Draco tentatively stroked the shirtless human's rippling pecs, the alien's four-fingered hands trembling slightly as they caressed Carl's bulging muscles for the first time. Draco still couldn't believe he was rooming with a human at the University of Kazonia. When Carl had first arrived on campus as part of the controversial exchange program, most Kazan students wanted nothing to do with him, viewing humans as arrogant aggressors who were trying to take over the galaxy. Draco had been wary too, but something about Carl intrigued him, especially after they accidentally collided at the spaceport. As they walked to the university together through the bustling alien city, with its organic spired buildings and bioluminescent vegetation so different from anything on Earth, Carl peppered Draco with curious questions. Despite himself, Draco found he enjoyed explaining his homeworld to the eager human. He even dared to voice the bitter sentiment many Kazon felt about humanity's rapid expansion in recent years. Carl listened thoughtfully, seemingly wanting to understand the Kazon perspective. Still, Draco cautioned Carl to watch his back on campus. Anti-human Kazan hardliners were openly opposing the exchange program. As one of the only humans at the university, Carl could be a target. Draco hadn't expected to get close to his human roommate, but the more time he spent with Carl, the more his fascination grew, especially with the human's exotic physique. Kazan males were slim and sinewy, evolved for their sweltering jungle planet. But Carl was so different, all hard, bulging muscles and cool, smooth skin. Now, in the privacy of their dorm, Draco finally dared to explore the human body that captivated him, running his hands over Carl's chest, shoulders, and arms as the human held still, his breathing heavy. Suddenly, alarms pierced the night, warning of an emergency lockdown. Peering out the window, Draco saw a mob of furious Kazon students armed with clubs and torches, storming toward the dormitory, shouting, Humans out! Humans out! Carl jumped up, eyes wide. What do they want? You, Draco said grimly as the mob began pounding on the doors and windows trying to force their way in. They're here for you. Carl's heart pounded as the angry shouts grew louder, the mob's fury palpable even through the dormitory walls. Draco sprang into action, his four eyes wide with fear, but his movements decisive. Help me block the door, Draco shouted over the noise, already dragging a heavy desk across the room. Carl didn't hesitate, his military training kicking in as he assessed the situation. He scanned the room quickly, looking for anything sturdy enough to reinforce their makeshift barricade. Together, he and Draco hauled furniture and stacked it against the door, their breaths coming hard and fast with exertion and adrenaline. The door shuddered under the impact of the mob's blows, the hinges creaking ominously. Carl and Draco exchanged a tense glance, both realizing their hastily constructed barrier wouldn't hold for long. Carl's eyes darted around the room, searching for an escape route. His gaze landed on the bathroom door and a memory flashed through his mind. A maintenance panel glimpsed in passing on his first day in the dorm. The ceiling, he exclaimed, already moving toward the bathroom. I think there's a way out through here. Draco followed close behind, his expression skeptical as Carl wrenched open the panel to reveal a narrow, dark space above. I don't know if I'll fit, Draco said doubtfully, eyeing the opening with trepidation. It's our only chance, Carl insisted, locking eyes with his roommate. I'll boost you up, then follow behind. Draco hesitated for a split second, then nodded, his heart made. Carl cupped his hands, bracing himself as Draco stepped into his grip and reached for the edge of the opening. With a grunt of effort, Carl heaved upwards, propelling Draco's larger frame into the crawl space. No sooner had Draco's legs disappeared into the ceiling than a tremendous crash sounded from the main room followed by the triumphant roar of the mob. Hard in his throat, Carl leaped, his fingers scrabbling for purchase on the smooth metal. He hauled himself up with a desperate surge of strength, the panel clanging shut behind him just as the bathroom door burst open. The crawl space was a tight, claustrophobic nightmare, the walls pressing in on all sides as Carl and Draco wriggled forward on their stomachs. The only light came from dim emergency strips along the floor casting eerie shadows across their straining faces. 
Behind them, the sounds of destruction and angry shouts echoed through the vents, spurring them onward. Left, right, another right. Carl lost track of the turns they made, his world narrowing to the brush of Draco's feet against his fingertips and the burn of his muscles as he dragged himself forward. Finally, blessedly, they emerged into a wider section of ductwork, gasping for air in the musty darkness. Where now? Carl panted, straining his eyes to make out Draco's shape ahead of him. I think I see an exit panel, Draco replied, his voice tight with strain and fear. Just a little further. They crawled the last few meters in silence, the metal cold and unyielding beneath their hands and knees. Draco reached the panel first shoving it open with a clang that sounded like a gunshot in the tense quiet. He tumbled out into the open air, Carl following close behind. They found themselves in an unfamiliar part of the dormitory complex, the distant sounds of shouting and running feet indicating the riot was still in full swing. Exchanging a quick glance, Carl and Draco set off at a run, sticking close to the shadows of the buildings as they tried to get their bearings. The campus was in chaos. Security forces in full riot gear clashing with pockets of enraged students. Smoke stung Carl's eyes and throat, the acrid scent of burning mingling with the coppery tang of blood. He and Draco darted from cover to cover trying to stay out of sight as they made their way towards the administration building at the center of the university grounds. A sudden cry of pain caught Carl's attention and he skidded to a halt, Draco nearly slamming into his back at the abrupt stop. In a small courtyard off to the side, a group of Kazan students huddled together, one of them clutching a badly bleeding arm. They weren't part of the mob, Carl realized, just innocent bystanders caught up in the violence. We have to help them, Carl said, already moving towards the injured Kazan. Draco caught his arm, his expression torn. We don't have time, he hissed, his eyes darting nervously towards the sounds of fighting. We need to get to safety. Carl met his gaze steadily. I can't just leave them, he said, his voice quiet but firm. It's not right. For a long moment, Draco stared at him, his four eyes unreadable. Then, slowly, he nodded. Together, they approached the group of Kazon students, hands raised to show they meant no harm. The Kazon recoiled at first, wariness and fear written plainly across their faces. But as Carl knelt beside the injured one and began carefully examining the wound, their expressions shifted to surprise and tentative gratitude. Draco knelt next to Carl, speaking in soothing tones to the Kazan in their native language. Gradually, the tension eased from their postures as they realized the human and his Kazan companion truly wanted to help. Using strips torn from his shirt, Carl fashioned a makeshift bandage and tied it carefully around the injured Kazan's arm. It wasn't pretty, but it would stem the bleeding until they could get proper medical attention. With Draco's help, he got the group on their feet, urging them to come with them to the administration building. Together, the unlikely allies set off once more, Carl and Draco flanking the limping Kazon as they made their way through the smoke-filled chaos of the campus. It was slow going, but step by step, they drew closer to the safety of the administration center. As the imposing structure finally came into view, Carl felt a wave of relief crash over him. They had made it. Against the odds, he and Draco had survived the mob's attack and even managed to help others along the way. The events of the night seemed to catch up with him all at once as they stumbled through the doors of the administration building, exhaustion and spent adrenaline making his knees weak. Beside him, Draco looked equally drained, his usually neat appearance disheveled and smudged with soot. University security forces and human embassy personnel swarmed around them, asking rapid-fire questions and ushering the Kazan students towards the medical bay. In the midst of the chaos, Carl found himself pulled aside with Draco, the two of them seated side by side as they recounted the night's harrowing events. Snippets of conversation washed over Carl as he struggled to focus. Talk of an outside Kazan political group, a deliberate attempt to sabotage the exchange program, and sow discord between their people. It all seemed distant, unreal compared to the visceral terror of the mob at their door and the desperate scramble through the crawl space. As the adrenaline faded, Carl became aware of Draco's shoulder pressed against his, the contact grounding him in the here and now. He turned to look at his roommate, his friend, 
and found Draco's four eyes already fixed on him, glimmering with some unspoken emotion. Thank you, Draco said quietly, his voice rough with exhaustion and sincerity, for saving my life, for showing me that humans are not what I thought. Carl swallowed hard around the sudden lump in his throat, the words hitting him like a physical blow. I should be thanking you, he managed, his own voice sounding strange to his ears. You've taught me so much, made me question everything I thought I knew about the Kazan. Draco's hand found his in the space between them, their fingers twining together in a gesture that felt as natural as breathing. In that moment, the chaos of the night seemed to fall away leaving only the two of them, human and Kazan, forged together by the crucible of shared danger and unexpected understanding. But even as Carl savored the connection between them, he knew it was only the beginning. The riot had torn open the fragile peace between their peoples, exposing wounds that ran deep on both sides. The fallout from this night would be immense, the political ramifications far-reaching and complex. As Carl sat with Draco amidst the bustle of the administration building, he knew that the road ahead would be anything but easy. But with his newfound ally by his side, he felt a flicker of hope kindle in his chest. Hope for a future where humans and Kazon could find common ground. Hope for a bond that could weather any storm. The night's ordeal had forged them together, two disparate souls united by the crucible of adversity. And though the future was uncertain, Carl knew one thing for sure. He would face it with Draco by his side, come what may. The days following the riot saw a flurry of activity on campus. Carl and Draco found themselves thrust into the spotlight as the university scrambled to regain control of the narrative. Reporters swarmed the grounds, cameras flashing as the two unlikely heroes were paraded before the media. The ceremony was a grand affair held in the university's largest auditorium, Carl tugged at his stiff collar, uncomfortable with the attention. He glanced at Draco, noticing the Kazon's usual vibrant skin seemed pale under the harsh lights. And now, the university president's voice boomed, we honor these two brave young men who exemplify the spirit of cooperation we strive for. Carl stepped forward as the human ambassador approached, a gleaming medal in hand. The cool medal settled against his chest heavier than he expected. Next, the Kazon elders surrounded Draco. Their chittering speech was too rapid for Carl to follow, but he saw Draco's eyes widen as they presented him with an ornate sash. The applause was deafening. Carl plastered on a smile, shaking hands and nodding as countless strangers congratulated him. Through it all, his gaze kept drifting to Draco. Hours later, they finally escaped back to their dorm room. The door clicked shut behind them, abruptly cutting off the noise and chaos of the day. In the sudden quiet, neither knew quite what to say. Carl's eyes roamed the room, taking in the fresh paint and replaced furniture. No trace remained of the mob's destruction, yet the memory of that night hung heavy in the air between them. Draco cleared his throat. Carl, I... there's something I need to tell you. Carl turned, heart pounding. Draco's four eyes met his filled with an intensity that made his breath catch. I've never felt this way about anyone before, Draco said, his voice low. The way you make me feel, it goes against everything I was taught, but I can't deny it anymore. I'm attracted to you, Carl, to your human form. Carl inhaled sharply. He'd noticed his own confusing feelings growing, but hearing Draco voice them aloud made it suddenly, vividly real. I... I felt it too, Carl admitted. His hands shook as he reached for the buttons of his shirt. Do you want to see? Draco nodded, all four eyes fixed on Carl as he slowly removed his shirt. In the privacy of their room, there was no need to hide his fascination. His gaze roved hungrily over Carl's exposed torso, drinking in every curve and plane. Hesitantly, Draco reached out. His fingers brushed Carl's skin. Tracing the dips and ridges of his musculature, Carl shivered at the alien touch, his breathing quickening as Draco grew bolder in his explorations. Without conscious thought, Carl found himself pulling Draco closer. The heat of the Kazan's body seeped through his clothes, igniting a fire in Carl's blood. 
Their lips met in a clash of alien and human, passion overriding any lingering doubts. What followed was a frenzy of discovery. Carl marveled at the surprising softness of Draco's skin, so different from the hard plates he'd expected. His fingers found sensitive spots that made Draco gasp and chirp in ways Carl had never heard before. For his part, Draco seemed intent on tasting every inch of Carl's skin. His tongue left tingling trails across Carl's chest and arms. When he focused his attentions lower, Carl arched off the bed with a strangled groan. Time lost all meaning as they explored each other's bodies. Eventually, spent and sated, they collapsed in a tangle of limbs. No words were needed as Draco curled protectively around Carl, his arms holding the human close. As Carl drifted toward sleep, wrapped in Draco's warmth, a distant part of his mind recognized that tomorrow would bring new challenges. But for now, in this moment of connection, none of that mattered. Here, in each other's arms, they had found something profound, a bridge between their two species, forged in the flames of shared adversity and blossoming desire. Carl woke with a start, his body tangled in alien limbs. As he shifted, a dull ache spread across his skin. He blinked away the last remnants of sleep and looked down at his chest. His eyes widened in shock. Draco, he hissed, shaking his companion. Draco, wake up. Draco's four eyes fluttered open, focusing on Carl's panicked face. What's wrong? Look at me, Carl said, gesturing to his torso. Draco sat up, his gaze roving over Carl's body. Strange, mottled patterns covered Carl's skin. Deep purples and blues swirling across his chest and arms. Draco reached out, tracing the marks with gentle fingers. Does it hurt? He asked, his voice a mix of concern and fascination. Carl shook his head. Not really. It's more of a tingling sensation. What's happening to me? Draco's mandibles clicked softly as he considered. It's a natural reaction he finally said. When Kazon and humans intermingle, as we did last night, there are certain biochemical changes that occur. Changes? Carl echoed, his voice rising. What kind of changes? Your body is adapting, Draco explained. Learning to tolerate contact with my species on a cellular level, it's actually quite remarkable. Carl sat up, running his hands over the marks. Despite their alarming appearance, he felt different. His mind raced, thoughts crystallizing with startling clarity. Every movement felt charged with energy. I feel amazing, he admitted, like I could run a marathon or solve complex equations. Is that normal? Draco nodded. It's another side effect. We call it xenogenetic promiscuity. It's an evolutionary trait from our history of conquest and assimilation. Your human biology is rewriting itself, in a sense. Before Carl could process this information, a commotion outside their door caught their attention. Angry voices filled the hallway, growing louder by the second. Abomination! Disgrace to both our species! They should be expelled! Carl and Draco exchanged worried glances. Word of their liaison had spread faster than they'd anticipated. A sharp knock at the door made them both jump. Carl Henderson and Draco Xanthar, a stern voice called out. You are summoned to an emergency disciplinary hearing. Report to the administration building immediately. The next hours passed in a blur. Carl and Draco found themselves before a panel of grim-faced university officials, human and Kazan alike. The charges against them were read out in clinical tones. Violation of interspecies fraternization policies, conduct unbecoming of exchange students, Potential biosecurity risks. As the accusations mounted, Draco suddenly stood. His voice rang out, silencing the room. Esteemed counsel, he began. I stand before you not as a deviant, but as a harbinger of change. On my homeworld, we are witnessing a revolution of thought. Old prejudices are crumbling. We seek to embrace the diversity of the galaxy, not shrink from it in fear. Draco's words grew more impassioned as he continued. What Carl and I share may be unconventional, but it represents the future. A future where humans and Kazon can truly understand one another, not just as allies, 
but as kindred spirits. We have the opportunity to be pioneers of a new era of cooperation and mutual growth. The council listened in rapt silence. When Draco finished, they huddled together, speaking in hushed tones. Finally, the head of the disciplinary board addressed Carl and Draco. While we deliberate on this unprecedented situation, you are both suspended from campus activities. We will inform you of our decision in due course. As they left the hearing, Carl turned to Draco. What do we do now? Draco's eyes gleamed with commitment. We find answers. My family lives in the wilderness territories. If anyone can help us understand what's happening to you, it's them. They slipped away from campus under cover of darkness, boarding a transport to the remote Kazan settlement. As they traveled, Carl noticed the marks on his skin slowly spreading, taking on new hues and patterns. When they arrived at Draco's ancestral home, the reaction was immediate. Draco's family recoiled at the sight of Carl, chittering in alarm. But as Draco explained and Carl revealed the extent of his transformation, their horror gave way to fascination. The clan elders gathered, examining Carl with wonder in their ancient eyes. They spoke rapidly in their native tongue, gesturing excitedly. What are they saying? Carl asked. Draco listened intently, then turned to Carl with a mix of awe and trepidation. They believe our union could change everything. If we continue down this path, you could become a bridge between our species, physically and culturally. Carl's head spun at the implications, but at what cost, he wondered aloud. As if in answer, a sudden wave of dizziness washed over him. He stumbled, catching himself on a nearby table. When he looked down at his hands, he gasped. His fingers were elongating, the skin taking on a faint, iridescent sheen. Draco, he called out, his voice cracking. I think it's happening again. Draco rushed to his side, supporting him as another spasm racked Carl's body. As the transformation accelerated, Carl clung to his lover, uncertain of what he might become. Carl's body convulsed violently, his skin rippling and bubbling as if alive. Draco watched in horror as his lover's form twisted and warped before his eyes. Carl's once smooth skin took on a mottled, leathery texture, reminiscent of ancient tree bark. His muscles contorted grotesquely, alien sinews bulging and retracting in unnatural patterns. Draco, Carl gasped, his voice distorted and strained. What's happening to me? Before Draco could respond, Carl screamed in agony as bony spikes erupted from his flesh, tearing through his clothes. Ridges formed along his spine, his vertebrae visibly shifting beneath his skin. Carl's eyes, once a warm brown, now glowed with an eerie, otherworldly light. He stumbled, clutching his head as if in pain. My thoughts, they're slipping away. I can't, I can't remember. Draco caught Carl as he fell, cradling his rapidly changing form. Hold on, Carl, we'll find a way to stop this. In moments of clarity, Carl's eyes focused on Draco's face. Please, he begged, his words slurring. Don't let me lose myself. Find a way before it's too late. Draco's mandibles clicked anxiously as he turned to his family. There must be something in our lore, our history, anything to halt this transformation. The elders huddled together, chittering in rapid kazan. Their ancient eyes studied Carl's mutating form with a mix of fascination and fear. Finally, the oldest among them stepped forward. There is a way, the elder's gravelly voice intoned, but it is fraught with danger. The ritual of cerebral coalescence, a complete interspecies union of minds. Draco's eyes widened. I've heard whispers of such things, but... The elder nodded solemnly. It could anchor his mutation, stabilize the change. But the risks are great. Your minds could be lost, your identities erased. Carl's body spasmed again, his fingers elongating into claws. Do it, he growled, his voice barely recognizable. Whatever it takes. As night fell, Draco and Carl were led to a hidden chamber deep within the clan's territory. Ancient symbols covered the walls, pulsing with an otherworldly energy. The elders surrounded them chanting in a language long forgotten by most Kazan. 
Ornate devices were affixed to their heads, a web of glowing filaments connecting them. Draco grasped Carl's transformed hand, squeezing it reassuringly. I'm here with you, he whispered. The chanting reached a fever pitch. Suddenly, Draco felt a jolt of electricity course through his body. His mind exploded with sensation as it merged with Carl's. Images flashed before him. Carl's childhood on Earth, his first day at the Academy, the night of the riot. But mixed with these were alien landscapes, the taste of strange foods, the feeling of four eyes blinking in unison. Their consciousness swirled together, human and Kazon blending into something entirely new. Draco felt himself losing grip on his identity, Carl's thoughts and memories becoming indistinguishable from his own. Just as it seemed they would dissolve completely into one another, a startling clarity washed over them. In this moment of transcendence, they realized their bond had elevated them beyond the constraints of their individual species. But the physical world could not sustain this joined state. As their minds began to separate, a heart-wrenching truth became clear. One of them must be sacrificed for the other to survive. In that final moment, Draco made his choice. With a surge of love and sorrow, he let go, allowing his consciousness to be consumed so that a part of Carl might live on. The ritual chamber fell silent. On the floor lay a single form, neither fully human nor Kazon. Its eyes opened, revealing a gaze that held echoes of both Carl and Draco. The being sat up, examining its new body with a mix of wonder and confusion. Fragments of two lives warred within its mind, human memories clashing with Kazan instincts. It stood on unsteady legs, its form a patchwork of human and alien features. Though alone, it felt the lingering warmth of a bond that had transcended all boundaries. With no clear purpose or place in either world, the hybrid creature took its first steps out of the chamber. It moved forward, driven by the faint echoes of a love that had rewritten the very fabric of its existence. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.